This is another edition of The Friday Beer Buzz! Wow, we are harmonizing a little bit there. It is the Friday Beer Buzz, powered by Sabatini's Pizza and Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Sabatini's with the area's greatest selection of rare, craft, and imported beers, growlers and crowlers, and 37 rotating drafts at Sabatini's Pizza at Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar, Wyoming Avenue in Exeter. Linda Sabatini is here. You had to be the feature beer of the day. The head on this looks like mashed potatoes. I'm dying to know what's under there. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, look at that. It's a very like a uh, fluffy head that's on. Maybe mine just, I'm very curious to see well, what this beer is. It looks like mashed potatoes. But I've it. never heard that descriptor on beer. No, I never have either. So I'm very curious because uh, Bill is here from mybeerbuzz.com. Bill. Good morning. Our beer today is mashed potato. <laughs> well, you said in an email we're in for a treat, and I'm excited that this treat is Thanksgiving related. Bill, in all, in all the t in all the years that you've been doing this, have you ever heard anybody use mashed potatoes as a descriptor? No, not not well. Thankfully, it's, it's a visual descriptor. So I know the frothy head, I guess, but no, I've never heard that. I always preach that uh, horse blanket as a taste descriptor. So <laughs> mashed potatoes, yeah. I, I, and that's not taste. You know, hey, not taste related. It's purely just the head of the beer in the cup. I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, that really it looks like it's. Uh, it doesn't taste like mashed potatoes. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Bill, uh, what do you want to start with here? Because uh, I want to get to this featured beer. Because again, your email got my. Uh, I was salivating a little bit. Like, oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Yeah. Well, uh, first off, don't let me stop you from, from sampling. You know, jump right in there if you want. Uh, our, our dear buzz today is a question that actually relates to today's beer. It's unplanned because last week was canceled and this was last week's question. But what makes a beer a Belgian style beer or a Belgian beer? And it, it, it's an interesting answer because there are, are traditions that come from countries like Germany and Czechoslovakia and, and Belgium and France and, and the UK. Um, but what makes a Belgian beer a Belgian beer is really unique and that is the yeast. And the yeast that they use in Belgian beers have a, a, and you'll see as you sample, a fruity, spicy, earthy uh, flavors to them. Um, they have effervescence, which you know contributes to the mashed potato head. And and, and these, um, these yeasts are cultured for hundreds, probably thousands of years in some cases. And they use a different yeast for their primary fermentation. Many times they use a different yeast for their secondary fermentation and even a third yeast for their bottle conditioning. And that really makes for some com complex flavors and, and some really unique uh, esters in, in the beer. Um, so we'll get to that more when we get to the beer. But that's a great question, and I thank, I thank the asker for asking that question. Linda. one that we get asked all the time. Sorry, Linda, this is your favorite kind of beer, correct? Uh, Belgians, or am I wrong? I mean, when I, people ask me what my favorite beer is, the answer is always the one in my hand. Right. You know that's my favorite beer, but no, I I have always been very, right, very close. Belgian beers and myself are very of all, very good friends. Of all the reasons, like is that one of the reasons? Is just the flavor? Is it? And, and like let's say if you're in Belgium for a week, yeah, you could find so many different kinds of beers. Okay, you know there's people know the main ones, uh, dub, like a Belgian double, Belgian triple, Belgian quad. They know all these, but there's so many. The, German Purity uh, Act, Ryan Heitz, go about years. They're, they're forced to, to go a certain way. They can only have certain things in their beers. Right. They'll just put everything in there. You know, so okay. you can really find oh, there's a, so many different complex be complex beers, easy beers. I mean, it, it's, so it's if a you different can, world. If you can think it, you can drink it. Pretty much. Belgian beer. Pretty much. It's a good slogan, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got some beer news, Bill? We do. We have three little tidbits of beer news today. The first one comes to us from two of my favorite breweries out on the West Coast and that is Sierra Nevada and Russian River, and their collaboration beer is called Brux, B-R-U-X. And Brux 2022, it's the 10th year release of this beer. They started making it, you know, if you're doing the math, in 2012. And again, here we go today, it is a Belgian-style ale, but it's re-fermented. So they've fermented it a second time with a yeast that is wild um, called Bertanomyces bruxinellis. And that's where the Brux comes from. And this is a really famous beer. It's a beer that people look forward to, and I think the 10th anniversary is a, is a great reason to get excited about it. It is 8.6% ABV, and it comes in big old 750 ML bottle. Coming to us from Founders in Grand Rapids, Michigan, we have High Ball Drifter. And this is another uh, 
trend in, in craft beer, and these are cocktail-inspired beers. And this beer is part of the Barrel Age series in 2022, and it is aged in bourbon barrels with orange peel, orange extract, and cherry. Um, and if that sounds familiar, that's, that's an old-fashioned. You know, that's if you're familiar with the cocktail, the old-fashioned. Um, that's where this beer came from. It is 11% and it travels in 12 ounce bottles. And our final, final little piece of beer news here comes to us from Dogfish Head in a collaboration with something I had never heard of called Gastro Obscura, um, which I guess is like a food adventure guide kind of thing. I've, I've heard of Atlas and Obscura, which is really, really cool, but uh, Gastro Obscura is doing this collaboration with Dogfish Head and the beer is called Fermentation Engastration Ale. <laughs> and fasten your seatbelts. Uh, it is brewed with barley, spelt, muscat grape, uh, muscat grape juice concentrate, flaked rice, apple juice concentrate, honey, mm. rice syrup, date syrup, uh, yeast, hops, and if that's not enough, they put rose petals in it as well. It is 10% ABV, and it will be packaged in 500 ml bottles. As always, if you want more information on these, you can look at the Breaking Beer News tab on mybeardbuzz.com. I, I would be, uh, I'd feel bad about myself if I didn't say this. Gastro obscura sounds like a diagnosis you don't want to get. <laughs> like, it's like, we can treat it. It's a small surgery. Gastro obscura. Yeah, it comes with a little, you, with a little band and it helps you lose weight. But that's bypass. I'm just coming up with like a blockage of some sort. But. Bill, what was the name of that beer again? Fermentation and gastration ale. Oh, that, that is, that, that's a, that rolls off the tongue like nothing. <laughs> no, no. Uh, thank you for the beer news again, uh, mybeerbuzz.com. Uh, Lindo, I, we're gonna get to this featured beer. I, I wanted to say, I saw your Facebook post with the uh, new shirts and the, the pink, that is, I don't know who does your stuff, it's awesome. That, that's uh, that's my friend Shannon. She does uh, all, all of the online stuff for us, and that T-shirt uh, is going over very well. She, she released it yesterday, and I think she sold twenty or thirty of them yesterday. It's like an elephant. Is there a reason behind it? Is that's that the, a... that's the delirium? That's uh, oh, okay, the gotcha. delirium tremens uh, logo, and we we are. Uh, we did it red because the delirium red beer itself is a very, is very popular. We have delirium red, uh, we have delirium day coming up, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. We're going to have Alex from delirium in, and that shirt nice. is uh, was supposed to be released uh, on that day, but we did it early. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, like marketing products and stuff that don't look like they're advertisements for stuff like this. Your name's obviously on there, but it's just a cool shirt. So, anyway, where do people get them? At the at the you can get them online online, uh, and we'll mail it out to you if you wanted to come in and grab it at the at the bar. Very cool shirts. Just Thank want you. to say. Um, okay, so this beer, the, this Belgian, I did taste yeah. it. Is I, I like this too. I, I think every time you guys give me a Belgian beer to try, I go, Ooh. sounds fancy. It makes me nervous, but now I'm getting comfortable with it, and I really like it. This is great. So the, the beer. The beer today comes to us from San Marcos, California, from a brewery that I visited several times and really love to go visit. It is from the Lost Abbey, and the beer is called Carnival. And and if you haven't guessed, we're doing this in celebration of Mardi Gras and, and the South American Carnival celebration. Um, and, and, and this is a really, really good beer. I call it a Saison-ish style beer, um, but it is, uh, legendary because the brewers at Lost Abbey, uh, this is their go-to beer. Like after they're done working, when they sit down, this is their go-to beer. Uh, so I think this is uh, another beer brewed in celebration of Lent and Easter season. It's their spring seasonal. But what you'll notice, Jason, when you taste it is, it tastes, there's a lot of flavors going on, but there are no spices in this. There are no, there are no weird malts or anything like that. And they use a wild yeast. They use the same yeast as they use in their Red Barn and their Ten Commandments beer. So it's a, it's a, what they call it their brewer's favorite off work beer. Um, it should be aggressively carbonated, which which will lean you into that mashed potato head. Um, and and it is loaded with flavors. I mean, you're getting all different kinds of strange flavors in this. And I, by strange, I mean good. Yeah. At some points, like I'll, I'll get like something fruity a little bit, but then I taste it again, and I don't. I love the carbonation. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a little bit of a sore throat today. Feels great going down. Like it, it's nice. It's a, it's like oh, it's just, it's like scratching. Uh, it's, uh, it's bugging me. But like this is delicious. Was, uh, I can't I can't really pull out one flavor. The first my first uh, instinct was some sort of berry cherry something like that, but I didn't know. Very subtle. 
Well, the, this one, yeah. the, the beer that uh, Bill was talking about uh, between Russian River and Sierra Nevada, the, the Brooks, uh, this is also done with uh, Britannomyces yeast. So a lot of the, the, if you get a little bit of like a funkiness to it, or and a, a little, not, it's not sour, but there's a little bit of like a tartness going on, that's going to be from the Brett. And when you smell it, right. and, and you start to understand what Brett is, uh, and you'll, I mean, as soon as I, I, I smell that. the beer, I get it. I mean, that's Brett that you're smelling. And you can, so you can tell this style of beer just from that. The the smell, is, I, is, I mean, I knew it was a Brett beer, but as soon as as soon as you smell that, you get that interesting that that Brett. I mean, how do you describe the smell of Brett, Bill? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where that's where people come down on funky. They come down on horse blanket. They come down. Some people on, on the more pleasant descriptor, they call it graham cracker uh, and then some people call it like uh, sweaty tennis sneakers. There's a there's a, a funk to it that, yeah, after you've had a few bread beers, you can definitely pick that out. Um, this beer uses Amarillo and Cinco hops as well, and they say it's a really good beer to age, and as you age it, the citrus flavors will fade out, and it will pump up the, the sort of tropical fruit flavors, and that estery uh, funk, wild yeast funk that you taste in. And, and uh, the Lost Abbey, uh, they are part of the family of Pizza Port Brewing and Port Brewing, founded in 2006. We've had their brewmaster, brilliant brewmaster, Tommy Arthur, on the radio show with us many, many times. And they, in, in my books, have the most fun and famous and cool beer name. Uh, they have a beer that is a goose-style beer, uh, and the beer is called Duck Duck Goose. Uh, and it's a favorite beer, but you, you got to love the name. I do, I do really. I do like that. Brings me back to kindergarten when I couldn't win that game, and but that's okay. I'll drink away my troubles with duck, duck and goose. But uh, so uh, this is good. This is available. You guys have it. It's um, seventeen. Yeah, it's, it's available in uh, in a nice uh, corking cage bottle, uh, seven hundred seven hundred fifty ml, twenty five ounce bottle, and uh, really, really nice to share with a few people. I mean, it is a little bit of a hitter. It's eight percent alcohol, but it's but it's nice. I, I do really really like this. And uh, again, for all the beer news that you haven't heard yet, it's all. Bill has a lot of it up at mybeerbuzz.com. And uh, um, anything else that we need to know about what's going on up in Word Sabatini's? Or do we cover everything? Oh. For, for first Friday, we're going to be selling some pizza tonight. Oh, yeah. that's a, they, oh, You're in that season now. I hope oh, you guys have had some rest leading up to this. We're ready. <laughs> All right. It's uh, Sabatini's Pizza, Sabatini's Bottle Shop and Bar in Exeter. Powering, of course, the Friday Beer Buzz. Bill, we'll do this again next week. We will talk to you then. Yep. Until then, yeah, have a good week. I'm good. MyBeerBuzz.com and Linda, thank you for being here as well. Thank Introducing you. me to another awesome new beer. It is the Friday Beer Buzz. It is the Friday Beer Buzz, of course, bringing good beers and good people together.